Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 100, and is it 24 I'm on now? Yeah, 124 on my let's play. I'm a topic by the way, I've told many times, I have a numeric, numeric, let me see that one, alright. Okay, we're gonna sell this 500, so we made 500. We, we freed a murderer unfortunately, but she said her group will help us, we need her, so I'm hoping later in the game we can call on them to help us. If I get in trouble, fingers crossed. Let me see your wares. Beautiful. So I just lost a hundred basically. Because I could have kept her there and get me six. No more statue of a woman, well drink a hammer. Oh yes, that, that hammer thing. I'm going. Okay, let's go and talk to them little mutants and head back into the morning. Oh actually. Absolutely. These guys were looking for something before. And since it's open, maybe I need to tell them these guys, wasn't it? Might be what they need. Best places to look for malls again. Can you tell me about the slums? How do malls work? Show. Sure. Scapture. Have you ever seen a weapon like this? Eyes wide when he spies Scapture and he waves it away. Get rid of it. He says, Can't you hear how much he hates it? He holds his hand to his ears as it's in pain. You don't actually hear anything, but you assume he must be referring to the voice of the blue or he's completely insane. I've heard of a weapon like that, whispers, eyes still locked on the scapula. Stories mostly, it's been around the balloon for a long time. That knife can cut open her mouth if you fix it up right. She don't like it and she's no friend to the one who wields it. Okay. Questions about you. Not what I wanted. Questions, nope. Oh, help. See what the health thing was again. Surprise emotion sizes up your glance. Maybe you can. Uh, we've been trying to pull the wagon free and getting nowhere. But another pair of arms. Okay. What's a friend? You emergency T Fury's wagon sinks deeper to bloom. What else do we pay here trading? Okay. Guess we're going to talk to these to help move it. You won't be able to lend a hand here. You want to make. Yeah, I'm trying to. Ah, here we go. Looks as if the bloom has begun to devour this wagon. Its wheels have been sucked down into the flesh of the platform. Even as you watch, it slowly recedes a little further into the ground. The merchant guards. Heave and push might help the guards. Okay. You should have a lot more might. Seriously, I thought you had the most. 45. 45. Probably have it more. No, I don't. We are the same. You're on 10. Ah. You step up the wagon and then begin to heave in time with the free guard. Red face is straining, you shove with all your might in the sinking wagon, but it's not enough. Two minutes of pushing from all the angles, you collapse against the wagon's all stead. Damn it, oh, curses one of the guards. Damn it! He kicks one of the wheels and throws his hands in the air. His boss looks at you and shakes his head. Don't mind, Alcan. He needs to, to pay for his, this job, and it don't look like it's going to be coming. Okay, I'll retry. It's 50% chance for it, particularly, isn't it? What? Five. Okay, 60% to pull it off. Go. Without a word, you throw your shoulders into the back of the wagon, begin to heave in time with the guard, surprised at your sudden generosity. The slack slackened, slackened. They slackened for a moment, and then, as if trying to prove themselves, redouble their efforts. So that's why they weren't helping before. I failed. You can feel a great, almost ultrasonic rumble of displeasure as the bloom's flesh begins to tear. Five is pop one at a time, and suddenly the wagon is free, and you stagger after it. In the furnace that was devouring the wagon, you see an object, some bit of numera, but the bloom flesh is already closing over. Quick fingers, go, go, go! 65, I guess, good. 20, what about you? 
80. Even better. Go. Yes. Oh, but perception. Okay, nice. Training levels percent code. You drop quickly to your knees and plunge your arms into the rot. Your fingers close over the device and you pull it out of the wound before the bloom flesh knits itself back together. Yes, nice. We probably should go back and have a little nap then. Wait you some of the money. And go back for him. You have our thanks, stranger, says the elders of the guard. If we lost the wagon, we would have lost our pay. You're a damn sight more helpful than most around here. Why don't you go talk to our uh, employees over there? Maybe they'll have something for you. Can we chat to this guy? Nope. Well, we helped you. Ah, I never thought we'd free the wagon! The human merchant grins like a madman and does a little jig, jiggy jiggy, his massive head rolling back and forth like a pendulum. Pendulum. Here, he tosses you a purse of shins. Oh, nice! So yeah, I made 500 and I've made it, made that 100 back, basically, and then 140 extra. And we're going to go in for a nap in a minute, so probably going to use, what was it, about 100 plus, so that, that seemed to even out. Here, he tosses you a purse of shins. That's the same as I paid the Marvan for our passage into the Bloom. And you're a lot more deserving than she is. You hear that, you great greedy wench? He shouts in the direction of the Marvan's courtyard and spits. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's your pro smiling loosely. Yep, I'm still here. Something you need. One of the best places. Uh... Nope, not in here. Quite you, I can say. The merchant greets you with a friendly nod. A door to trade post still shut, says the vandal. But at least we have a wagon. Tell me back, Sandra. What do you guy? And we can't use the knife on it. Okay. Yes. They're going to put to sleep. Need a bit of that money. I wish the sleep was free. But I guess other might speed back up, so might need it when we're back on the ship. Hopefully we're more friendly and shows the things as we brought the friends over. Soulful Mutant's residence. Okay, it was for her then. I think it was free for that. There we go. Okay, let's go back and talk to the Mutants. And then we're gonna jump through the thingy. Like Probably not to use any reset any that stuff. It's the plan, it's the plan with the man, the man with the plan. He is the plan. Okay. Right. What do we have to say? Can we go back to the ship and I'm sure we can have things on me, Paul. I know it came up with quest, I haven't looked at the quest yet. Okay, you. You can it. This slim girl is almost a mirror of the boy who stands next to her. They could be twins or clones. So close is the resemblance. You can see that what the fudge. You can see that her features are sharp, though shadows flit 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 yeah, flit and play too quickly across her face. Oh, just hit him. <laughs> across her face to be sure of anything else. She okay, it's really shot, didn't Paul? Um, and dangerous too. Very quickly across her face to be sure of anything else. She slums almost 
imperceptibly inside a cloak of darkness. As you open your mouth, a companion interposes himself. This sharp-faced young man reminds you of a great rodent, more prone to scampering and sliding than running or walking. Shadows play across his face, distorting his features, and you are unable to get a clear glimpse of his face, even so, or perhaps especially because of it. He seems to bear a notable resemblance to the young woman standing next to him, their face shifting and changing in the near perfect time. As you approach, he sniffles loudly and drools some flammy, flammy spit across your path. He drools it or spits it. He wipes his mouth with the back of his hand, and through you can't see his face. His tone conveys the sneer clearly enough. What do you want? Paul PJ? What the hell's a Poppy J? His voice echoes eerily in slight delay between the movements of his lips and the sound of reaching his ears. Hold the girl with you. Perception. For the briefest moment you think you see the face of a victim in her shadows. She casts a despairing eye at you and then the darkness fills her face with a sneer. Her. She's no one. I am Vogue. I asked who's the girl with you is. I said she's no one. You need to be concerned about. She's my shadow and my hidden blade and you should take care. I don't stick you with her. I want to know about the girl with you. Tell me of her. Why do you keep asking about her? Tell her it is mine and she will stay mine till I say otherwise. I'm the one who's interesting. I'm the one you should care about. Ling's rage seems to have loosened his control over his companion. For you, you see a flash of blue skin beneath the shadows. Her mouth works frantically as if she's trying to tell you something while her carpenter struggles with his fury. While the effort of visible will Fengen brings himself and her back under control again. Hmm. She's a slave. You pair? Are you the pair who's been harassing Corrin? It's like your face keep changing when you talk. Her? She's no one. I'm Vogan. It's like a bond you have down and remove it. He laughs a shivering peal of Mythless joy that sounds like an ice breaking and glass ringing. She is mine. She would go on my word, not yours. Strangle him! <laughs> Let her go, I will teach you. Suffering truly is. Okay, you guys should have this. 45, seriously? Seriously? How is my mic the same as you guys? Fudge. You grab hold of his neck, but he as your fingers loose and slips away, eyes filled with fear, he turns to run, and as he does, the shadows surround him completely and then consult into a single point with a loud pop of his place of air, he is gone. Um, drops to the ground as he vanishes and her body begins to tremble and shake, healing try to help her remain calm. Great. So is that worked? His eyes snap open in a blind terror, seeking any refugee from nightmare that seems to be playing in his head. In her head, she sees you in there, and she begins to relax immediately. Her muscles unclenching one by one, and she eases out of the seizure. Thank the God you are not vulnerable, she whispers. Oh, we saved her. We've gone according to plan, but well, shadows have peeled away, drifting into the air like poisonous smoke, and revealing Dylan's true form. Skin is irish, indish blue, and her hair is bright pink. He, he's really gone. I, can, I can't feel him in my mind. You did it. Fahad, we praise you did it. Yay. Not the way I wanted, but yay. She shakes her head as if to clear it, and a small trickle of bluish blood runs from the corner of her mouth where she bit her tongue or lips. I don't know how to thank you. You must have questions. Tell me about yourself. I was born in Nellis, and my parents were good people. I learned the walkways of the second tier by heart. That's how I discovered the portal to the bloom. I kept seeing the traders who came back and from here, and they always had such interesting wares. One day I snuck after them, and I wanted to see where they came from. Her face darkens. That was the day the bloom closed as pathways to my home. I used to think it was my fault, but the bloom doesn't seem to care for me now. 
After I got here and discovered I couldn't get home, I had to find a way to survive. I found five families who were willing to help me and who could afford to feed me once every few days. I helped them when I could not cut and kept looking for a way home. But as I got older, she looked embarrassed. I needed more excitement. That's when I met Vargon. She looks away, unwilling to say much more. It was my psychic powers that drew him to me, he says. He, he saw what I had. He wanted to take it, use for himself. He called me an empathetic amplifier. I could read people and I could make their feelings stronger. He used me to find out who the scared people were and then we prayed on them. How about yourself? How did you fall in with Varga in the first place? He seemed dark and fascinating. The adults didn't want me to go near him. But he was like a mirror of what I wanted to be. Strong, mysterious, ambitious. I let him bend me and use my powers to make him more of what he wanted to be. And I didn't realise I was trapped until it was too late. You had quite a time of it. How are you feeling? Even through I'm still in the bloom. Even through we're still surrounded by all this. Even through I need to make amends to everyone. I robbed and bullied with Alan. I feel hopeful. It feels like a new beginning. Like... Like the night has been peeled away and discarded. By right, yourself. So. Oh. oh well. Oh, we did it. Should we go back to that woman and tell her what happened? I guess we should. And then we'll go to the spaceship finally. And with that being said, that's as we head back. I'm going to end the episode. So please like, please subscribe, please share next week. And if you haven't already, like normal, share the video. And subscribe for me once again. Thank you very much. See you next week, everyone. Bye.